You may be seated. Hello, Your Honor. Hello. This is the case of Ching Long versus Barabay. Thank you. You're welcome. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Mrs. Ching Long, you claim you've never had a chance to know the man you believe is your father because he was tragically killed in a fire. You claim you struggled for many years because your mother, Ms. Barabee, never established paternity for you as a child, created an unstable home environment, and left you with a lifetime of unanswered questions. Okay. You are here today asking for the results of a paternity test to determine if the alleged dad, Mr. Audis, is your biological father. Now, members of the Audis family are also in court today and will join us shortly. Your possible grandmother and uncle claim your mother was never willing to submit to a DNA test and thus have doubts. The case was hurried to the top of the docket because your potential grandmother's health is failing, and she wants to know if you're really her granddaughter before she passes away. Oh. Ms. Ching Long. Is your mother really to blame for all of this? My mother is absolutely to blame, you know? I was born to the most irresponsible, <laughs> selfish, immature person in the world. Um, you know, she already had a three-year-old when I was born in the same situation, not knowing who her father was as well. So my mother should have known better not to be <laughs> sleeping with multiple people at the same time. <laughs> First 10 years of my life, I didn't even have a picture of this man. I never I even knew what he looked there like. Several times. When we moved back, to finally, so I could meet him for the first time, he had passed away two years earlier. I you know, took her back. This is, you know, supposedly who my dad is. You know, I never got a chance to know this person. And that kills me, you know, because, you know, I heard he was such a good person. And, you know, for me, me not getting to know person. him, you know, it's, just, it's, it's ruined my life. It's ruined all my relationships. Ms. Barabee, you say it's not your fault, but you see how your daughter is hurting. Yes, I bring her over there all the time to see him. He Not left that her. I remember, though. He got in a relationship with a Maybe really bad time. person. I got married to a very controlling man. My ex-husband moved me 1,700 miles yeah, to Arkansas. Yeah, but it was, you know, they fought all the time, back, and it, it, it was always her fault. I moved back fault. over Why there to California so she could have a relationship no, with James. She depended he on her ex-husband. already passed away. My birth certificate doesn't have his name on it. It has somebody else's name that she was with at the time of my that birth. That I was living with. That, I was that living. she was living with. So she always so says... So it's not your stepfather. It's not who it was you've my been first told is your biological father. For her father. It's a third person. No, this is my first boyfriend before I met her father. Yeah. I put him on the birth certificate when, when she I was first born. Her, the only I lost she a lot of blood. Name on the birth certificate I was young. Was so he could claim me I on his taxes. Truth. No, that's not true. That's what she told me, and I didn't find that out, Your Honor, until no. maybe three, four years ago. You just were not sure who the father was. I was not sure because I was still with G with my ex. Then I got with James two weeks later, but I never slept with the ex again. Ms. Ching Long, you say that this has ruined your life. It ruined... This has. It's, it's, Tell the court you know, why me, you feel this me way. Me being the oldest one that was in the household, she had two other girls from her husband. You know, she would, you know, leave us all, you know, leave me alone to babysit them so either she could go to the casino, so she could gamble anywhere, you know. That's not she true. Would. That is true. That's she not knows true. it's true. She's this not remembering. She... And then there were so many times where her, you know, her and my stepdad fought back and forth. This is not true, because I've Whenever... always been a loving mother to her. I've always been the she best never... forever. I don't I've told even her the call truth. her mother. I call I've her woman. Her. And she knows that. She sees it in my contacts on my phone. I don't call her mother. She has not earned that title. You call your mother woman. Yes. Not my other daughters. Her other, you know, daughters don't even speak to her anymore. Yes, they do. My oldest sister, you know, was raised on and Why off are you with her. Lying? I'm, you can, you know, you can talk to anybody about all this. This is all true. No, this is. I told true. you my mother's delusional. She'll never own up to anything, and that's why we're in this own predicament. Up. That's, I'm the one that. I'm the you one. Know, she won't own up to anything. What are you talking about? Own up. Whenever we had moved back to Sacramento, California, which is where I was born and where we're from, she had told me, "Hey, you're finally gonna get to meet your dad." You know, this was 1999. I was 10 years old. Um, whenever we you know, would try to contact him, it turns out he had passed away two years earlier in the fire. And my mom, she was devastated. She was, you know, crying and, you know, she was uncontrollably this and that. But I felt nothing. I didn't know this person. And how, you know, I just, how can I be sad for somebody that I, I don't felt... know and that I don't know for sure if it's my father? I felt bad you know, because so, I felt that he could you know, be a good it, father to me. In your court papers, so you bad. say you were writing messages. Yes. Um, there was With a period hopes. of time 
when, you know, I was just so depressed, you know, and I wanted to feel, you know, like, I guess what she felt, sadness and stuff. So, you know, I would take off the sheet of my twin mattress and I would write all these messages, like, you know, um, and he had died with um, his son, an 18-month-old son. So it was him and the baby that died together. So this was a brother, you know, potentially a brother I had that I never got to know either. So I would write messages like, you know, James, if, you know, if you can hear me, are you really my dad? You know, do you love me? Did you ever... You know, why wasn't he around? You know, why, why, why was there any doubt in the first place? That's you, why you feel emotional now because you just feel like you lost valuable time for no reason. Yeah, it's like, and, and like I told you, I'm not, you know, I'm not like my mom. And if this person was my father, you know, you know, I didn't get to know him. So it's just, you know, me writing that stuff, I was so depressed and, you know, and I just wanted him to contact me and let me know it was all right and, you know, tell me why he wasn't around, you know, and just, all this stuff. And, and she always... So it, it was so and hard on me. having that opportunity really hurt. Yes, it did. So, you know... It, it still was hurts, such, I see. It was such a big blow that whenever I was finally going to get the chance to really meet him, you know, that he had died already. Ladies, we have some other witnesses that I would like to hear from. Uh, Ms. Barabee, if you would please come and take a seat here in the witness stand. Right there, please. And, Jerome, I need you to please go get Ms. Myers with her son, Mr. Audis. Hello. You go up here to the left. You go in first. She goes in second. Now, this is your potential grandmother and your potential uncle. Please stand at the podium. Hello. Thank you so much for joining us. Sure. Thank you, Judge. If you want more episodes of Paternity Court, make sure to subscribe and click on the notification bell. Now, Ms. Myers, I want to ask you to tell the court about when Autumn was born. What do you remember? Well, I remember being told that Valerie was pregnant, um, and when she actually went into labor, she called me. I know she says she didn't, but she called me and wanted us told us we couldn't go to the hospital. Yeah, That's we not weren't true. allowed in the hospital. That's, That's not true. You know. And what was the reason? She didn't give us one. She just said there were other I people there. I never called anybody. I was I lost a bucket of blood. I never you called talked anybody. You talked to mom that morning. No, I called nobody. Yes, no, she did. And no, my I son didn't. Knew. I didn't she call anybody because I was already stressed. Okay, I, I called them in. Let's give them a chance to speak and tell Here, their side James of the story. James knew she was in labor. When James got home from work, he said, Valerie's having the baby, but we can't go. We don't know where she's at. And I said, well, she told me we couldn't go. So I not didn't true. see the baby until she was about two months old. Valerie, it is true, That's and you not know true. it. I never called them. <sighs> then how did we know you? I didn't were even know that. She's never moved around ever really sure. Yeah. I'm owning up. I'm here. James, yeah, you're here. Me you need a wake-up wake call. This. No, I wanted to do you this years ago. Need a wake-up call. No, you finally made the truth. Okay, let's get some order in the court. I tried to have paternity test done from the get-go. I offered to pay for it. No, we set it up with you, and you moved, you Ms. changed your phone number. Ms. Barabee, please not let the witness speak. We I were the ones who you stayed in the same place. Respond. We stayed in the same place. My address has not changed in 30 years. Ms. Myers and Mr. Audis, are you stating to the court that because no one ever called you or because you were told not to come, you assume, well, he's not the father then, or they would want no, us I there? No, I didn't assume he wasn't the father, but... Why you know, did we you didn't... think you weren't allowed to come? She told me we weren't allowed to be at the... We, she, she wouldn't tell no, us. No, because I didn't talk to she nobody. She didn't want us there because You can ask my parents. They're not here as witnesses. Her boyfriend my parents was there the in the hospital. hospital. This is not was true. Was your ex at the hospital? No, he was the man that... The man that he's she put the, the name on the birth certificate. The guy she lived with when she got pregnant was at the hospital. He we wasn't living with me anymore. Was he wasn't at the hospital? No, he came to the hospital after, but he wasn't there when I had the baby. I didn't allow him to be there. If the gentleman who's on the birth certificate was allowed to come visit at the hospital and you thought he could potentially be the father... Exactly. Why, why is it that Mr. Audis and Ms. Myers... Her son came to my house three days after she was born to see her. That's when we yeah, were Yeah, just probably to see what I looked like to see if I was his or not. That's, you know, he, how was he supposed to know? My mother was, you know, she was shady. She was with somebody else. That's not the truth. Somebody that... Okay, you made a mistake. Not, I put the wrong person. Man I didn't know. Time. 100%. I ain't lying about nothing. I don't lie. All right, let's we get to the 
everyone at once. We tried to get a test done while she was still pregnant. No, you didn't. You never came to my house with the test. You never called the doctor. You never set up nothing. Don't even lie. You guys wanted everything to be with Cody. We're not lying not about him. This is we the truth. We can never get a straight answer this out of This is the you. truth. At all. I don't need I to lie. I haven't gotten one out either, pretty much. We didn't hear a thing from her until after my brother's death and it became a social so security issue. Why didn't you contact issue. me to tell me he died? Two years right. past. Did you guys call me you to tell me he died? I love that man. You left the Don't state. sit here and tell me you that you guys state. cared about me because you didn't. You left you the state. You were in Arkansas. Just we didn't me. even know where you were. See, it's not my fault my ex-husband moved me out there. I came back in 2000 you made so no she could effort. have a relationship with her father. You I made moved no back. Effort. I told my ex-husband I was moving back so she could see James. I'm not even... Listen, what is disturbing to me is how much the focus has gotten off of Autumn, right. who is standing there still trying to figure out who her father was. I want to know my family. If they're my family, they I want to know that. I want to know myself. Yes, she my even James has Washington. passed away. Mr. Let's, let's have control in this courtroom. I did get to meet them when I was 10 years old after James had passed away. We got in contact with them. Greg came to pick me up. You know, um, he drove me and James's son. We all went yeah. up to Kathy's house for Thanksgiving, and I had a wonderful yeah, two or three days Washington. with them. They were so warm and, you know, welcome, but we moved around so much after that, I, I lost contact with them. No, so this they, is the first time I have them. seen them in 13 years. Mm, yeah. You know, yeah, these I people should have been in my life. It's not, I don't have them. We always try to call them. Our lawyer contacted them in 2006. She we set up the this, test. Kathy's never no, changed. Never, I don't know if it's because she I got never heard from the same house. The only reason she's ever wanted a test after he passed was Social Security. I reasons. went to no, I went it. to court. She wanted yeah. to do it before I was 18 so she could get Social Security money for me. Because yeah, that she was needed the only, nice the only okay, reason. Okay, let's, let's get so, that fact into evidence. Say that again. Um, you know, after right after we had found out he passed away, she contacted Social Security trying to get Social Security for me. His ex but was me, getting it for her yeah, son. But, you know, they were together and there was no doubt in that paternity. You know, with me, you know, another man being on my birth certificate, and then she... And what did you really feel like Ms. Barabee's motives man. were at that time? Money. Mm. Well, child Money support is the law. Hello? Everybody knows what? that. Who broke child the law? Child support is the law. Who broke the law? Child I said is child not support the law. is the law, and every child that's born, well, they deserve child support. But you messed that up by not And there's a district attorney letter that I have with James's name on it. But Thank there's a birth much. certificate with somebody else's exactly, name on it. Exactly. Yeah. Which gave him since, and gave us no legal right to me and James, he's not here to defend himself. But he would tell you, me and him, in our hearts, knew she was his daughter, and we were going to prove it. That's what she says, but he we passed, passed away. away. We didn't know. That's how we felt. If my fell. husband moved me across the country, so, how was I supposed Myers. to do it? But you made no effort to it's, contact. It's, I made an effort, no, you guys. Didn't. I didn't have your phone number. I had to go through neighbors to find you guys. Miss Baraby, I'm trying to understand from their perspective what they believed your motives were. As you talk about how they didn't show up and this person didn't do this and that person I'll didn't do that. My no, I don't want you to tell me anything. Okay. Okay. Right. I want you to allow other anyway. people just to speak for a moment. I wanted to just look at you, Ms. Myers, because I see sometimes you becoming very emotional, and I can tell that this is important to you, too. Oh, it's, I, I have a terminal illness right now. I have maybe two years to live. And I need to know that she's my grandchild. I want to spend time with her. I want to know her, her. you know? And I want to know that I've got another niece. You know, I'd like to know that ironclad 100%. And so it's she can not be a part that we wouldn't life. have loved her before. But you know, there were so many stories being told, and she was so far away. There's so much doubt that, you know, I don't blame them at all for not, you know. They but, didn't you know, know we for sure. I wouldn't, so you know. many years. I mean, there's and so Ms. much Chihon, time. what would it mean for you for them to be your family. I mean, it's because, you know, my mom, you know, we don't have a lot of family. My mom's, you know, my mom's parents, they, you know, roughly get along, not really. And I have sisters and they're, you know, they don't get along with her either. I'm the only person my mother has, you know? And, you know, I, like I said, I'm not like her and I want to know who I'm like. What I've been told about James is that he was nice and kind and, you know, he laughed a lot, he smiled a lot. Yes. And that is just like me. You know, I want to know if this if this person is mine so I can get to know my grandmother and my uncle. That's wonderful. You know, there's more family. You know, I don't know where the other half of the came from. Yeah. So, um, I believe this court has heard enough and it is time to hear the results. Jerome, do you have the envelope? I do. There you go. Now, before I read these results, I want everyone to understand how the court was able to get this DNA testing 
done, even though Mr. Audis, her alleged father, is deceased. It's called reconstructive DNA. And just so people understand, uh, I asked Dr. Baird from DNA Diagnostics to explain briefly uh, how this process is done, if you'd look at the monitor here. Judge Lake, reconstruction testing is the kind of testing where we test relatives of a deceased alleged father to determine if he could be the biological father of a child. And thank you to Dr. Baird for that. All right, let's go to the results. Do you want to watch Paternity Court on TV? Go to paternitycourt.tv to find your local listings. All right, let's go to the results. In the case of Autumn Ching Long, Mrs. Ching Long, James Audis was your father. <laughs> This is probably the first thing my mom's ever told me that actually, you know, turned to be, you know, true. If he wasn't my dad, I would have been heartbroken. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's... Your mom he's, is crying for you. You want to step down and hug your daughter? You know, it's, it's been so hard for me. What do you have me. there, Ms. Myers? That was James's. And that was your son's? Yes, and then I have his birth bracelet that has Violet. his birth picture in it. Oh, so. that is beautiful. Ms. Myers? Yes. How do you feel now having a piece of your son oh. here with you today? I know, like, just, you know, since he's passed, you know, she doesn't have him anymore. Now, I, you know, she can have now me have now. <laughs> She's you a do. lot like James. She's a lot like She's him. A lot like James. You know, I have my oh, mom's yeah. coloring, you know, and my mom is part Hispanic and I have dark hair and dark eyes. And, She's you know, James like was him. blonde hair and blonde, blue eyed. And that's why, you know, there was always kind of a doubt, you know, but, you know, it turns out I am his. Well, I there is no doubt now. He never doubted. Well, this court is all about bringing families together, and this is a beautiful sight to Thank see. You. Finally. Thank you, Honor. It's so long Love overdue. Love to you all. And just enjoy each other. Really Court well, is adjourned. Well, well. <laughs> Thank you. You gotta come with come see us. It's wonderful. You're right. And I'm so glad that we know so we can go from here. I feel that paternity court, it, it changed my life. I, I, I know my other half now. I know where I came from. I know I know why I look like this. I know why I am the way I am. I, I it's it's been this has been the best day of my life. You know, finally knowing, you know, who my father is.